everyone, welcome to another video. It has been a year since I think I last spoke about costume jewelry and I have some new items that I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna talk about these items from the point of view of are they worth it or are they not? Like if you're gonna buy it and enjoy it but maybe you wanna sell it one day. They're also good items for gifts, even if it's a gift for yourself. Let's say you're on a smaller budget but if you could only buy one thing that's potentially gonna transform your outfit and your look what might that one thing be? I'm gonna come on to that. But the first things I wanna talk about are earrings. I bought two pairs this year. The first, God, I think this must have been in January. The first pair are these. These are from Dior. These are the tribal earrings in the canage pattern. You could get these in two different colorways. I got the rose gold, or it's maybe champagne colored gold, with a pink pearl in the middle. But you could also get them in more of a yellow gold with a white pearl in the middle. Out of all of the Dior earrings I've got, I feel like these are my favorite, and they're something that I wear the most. From the point of view of wear and tear, I can tell you that the gold does not and has not worn off and I wear these a lot. But I also like the elegance and the simplicity of them when you wear them. If you are someone who maybe likes designer pieces but you wouldn't necessarily wear something from Chanel that's got the double C's on it, if you want something that is classic, is designer, that you could resell and get some money back on but you don't want like a massive logo slapped across it, then I think the tribal earrings are pretty good. Another reason why I particularly like these is with the tribal earrings, they're quite expensive. I feel like they're about 400 pounds. I will put the details of what they are here, but I feel like they're about 400 pounds. And you see so many replicas going around, even on ASOS and things like that, I've seen them, where they've got the small pearl on the front and the bigger one on the back. Do you know what I mean? You know when you get something and then you see versions of it everywhere and you just think, oh, I spent 400 pounds on that and I could have bought some for like five pounds. The second pair that I've got are these. These are from the Spring Summer 17 collection that launched in like end of February, I feel like. I saw them and I really liked them and I am a fan of these. So when I saw them, I thought they were quite nice. Do I think that Dior earrings are worth it if you're looking to buy something with a view to selling it on one day? I actually don't. I don't think it because particularly with this pair, I remember when I opened the box and I ordered these online, when I opened the box, the so these are faux pearls, obviously, and when you looked at them close up, there's tiny little scratches on the actual pearl itself. Although I like them and I wear them a lot, the quality does not justify 400 pounds. Unlike with Chanel, with Dior, when you try and sell it secondhand, particularly the jewelry, it doesn't perform as well. So I think that if you're looking to get something with a view to selling it one day, unless you just love these and you want to get them, then I think go for something like Chanel as opposed to Dior. The next thing which is also new, and I got this in the spring as well, I actually got this at the same time as the B earrings. And this is something that I really want to recommend because it's good for two reasons. This is it, you've probably seen it before, I've worn it in quite a few videos. You can get it in many different colors. So I got the black, but you can get like pale blue, pale pink, I've even seen like a crackled, metallic effect. It's a choker necklace, but what I liked about it, you can turn it into a bracelet. So you wrap it around your wrist like this. You can wear it in that way. The gold has not scratched at all. The pearls are very secure and they're very in there. Is there a tiny mark on one of them? There is. See, this is the thing. They're effectively plastic with a coating over the top. So they do scratch and they do mark up. The other deal item that I want to show you, this is way vintage. I bought this in 2003. I probably wear it more than that pearl necklace, actually. It is this. It is so beautiful. It's um, a silver choker with a bow on the front, and the whole thing's made out of one piece of metal. It's clean looking. I love bow designs anyway, but this is something that's really versatile. I've worn this before with like a white shirt and like a blazer jacket. I've even worn it with like an old t-shirt and a leather jacket, and either way it works really well. I think it's so feminine, it's so pretty, but unlike a lot of the newer items, I feel like I still have a couple of items from early 2000s, and I feel like the quality was better then. I've got earrings that haven't tarnished at all. I actually have earrings to match this, but I couldn't find them at the time of filming this. But I feel like the quality was so much better. When I've looked at this necklace on secondhand websites, I'll try and find one if I can. I saw one a while ago. And the price of them, I can't remember how much I paid for this, but the price of them now is really expensive. I'm gonna talk about Hermes and then I'm gonna move on to Chanel. The first item I've ever owned from Hermes 
is one of, is this the Click H bracelet? It's the smaller one anyway. There's like a thicker one and then there's this thinner one. And I was fortunate enough to have been given this from a friend who was very generous. This wouldn't have been something that I would have automatically thought to go and buy. But when it was given to me and I tried it on, I loved the look of it. And it's actually already got me thinking about getting another one that I could pair it with. The quality of it, it's all right, it's pretty good. It's plated, again, I don't know if it's plated in real gold, but one thing I can tell you is that on the corner of the H, the gold is just starting to wear off and you can sort of see the silver tone underneath it. I've also seen that with these, after a while, the metal scratches up quite badly. Now, when I wear this, I'm mindful of that and I try and um, be careful with it. Do I think it's worth it? I haven't had it long enough to really be able to test it out from the point of view of wear and tear. But one thing I can say is that when I was given this, I mentioned just there that I was thinking about getting another one, like a thicker one, to pair with it. And I was having a look at them on eBay and also on Vestaire Collective. And I was really surprised because this was around about 450 pounds, which is crazy. But when I saw them on secondhand websites, even nearly new ones with all of the boxing and all of the packaging, there are some people that are trying to get as near to the price they paid as possible. But to be honest, the average price looks to be about 300, 350 pounds that they sell for. I'm gonna move on to Chanel and I'm gonna talk specifically around brooches. If you've got a smaller budget, what I was saying earlier, if you've got a smaller budget or if you maybe wanna get someone a nice gift that is under 500 pounds. Some of these things are even under 300, to be honest. If you want to get someone something quality, then I personally, I highly recommend the Chanel brooches. Now I wear these in a number of different ways. Sometimes, like the other day, I was wearing this top actually from H&M and it was a bit big on the chest. So what I did was I found the seam of it that went down the middle, I pinched it together and I put like a brooch there to hold it together. And the brooch just made it look like it was meant to be there. It didn't look like a brooch. Another thing that I quite like doing is I've got like an old denim jacket that I got from Topshop a while ago. I think they still do them. And you can just jazz it up by pinning on a couple of different brooches. You don't even have to have entirely Chanel ones. You could maybe have one Chanel brooch and pin a couple of others on that aren't even designer, but the whole thing just gives it more of a unique look. Unlike anything else I'm gonna show you, with these brooches in particular, they hold their value. Whenever I go and have a look on secondhand websites to see what's going on with the brooches, they're always generally more expensive than I remember them being if you go into the store. I really highly recommend that instead of looking online and paying a price that you are assuming is cheap, honestly go into the store because you would be so surprised at how much these things really are. So it's good news if you've got one that you wanna sell. I would also say if you have a budget and maybe you've got 300 pounds and you wanna be able to get a brooch and you don't wanna ask about pricing, when they bring out the tray with all of the brooches in it, if you turn them over on the other side, the same thing goes for the earrings, but it's got the price on there. So if you're nervous about asking prices, at least you don't have to pick one out and then be like, how much is it? Don't be nervous about pricing. Whenever I go in there, I say to them, this is how much I've got to spend. What have you got that I can get for that? You're never gonna see them again and it's an easier way of cutting to the chase and you getting what you want and like cutting out as much time as possible. So I would always recommend doing that. Probably my favorite brooch is this one. And I recall from memory, this was around about 280 pounds. I like this because it goes with so many things. My second favorite one is this silver one, which is like oversized. Do you know something? I remember this from memory. I think this was about 245. And I've seen this secondhand on websites for like 400 pounds and upwards. This is what I'm saying though, because it's large, you would be forgiven for thinking, maybe you bought it for 380, 400 pounds, therefore that's a good price, I'll pay you for it. But you would be surprised. Very often it's not got anything to do with the size of the item, it's more the intricacy and the detail on it. In summary, I think these are worth it from the point of view of resale, but also from the point of view of having something you can pin onto an outfit that might be entirely from H&M and it just takes it to the next level. Now moving on to Chanel earrings, and I really wanna share with you the items that have worked well and the items that haven't, and that if I could give you some advice, I would tell you to steer clear of. Items that are worth getting are things like this, solid pieces where there's nothing on it that can fall off. 
So for example, I've got these silver ones, one of my newer pairs actually, which I find these so pretty, are these dangly gold ones. I love the look of these. I don't normally like yellow gold, but I like the look of them and they've got a sort of matte look to them as well. The gold isn't shiny as such, it's more matte. Then I have these black ones. The black and the silver ones, I actually got these to match the brooches at the time. Items that I love, but I would highly recommend you avoid, are anything that has got loose pearls or crystals or any sort of stone that has not been clasped into place. And I don't know why they don't add clasps to their jewelry because honestly, it's so expensive, they could at least do that. But I wanna show you a pair of earrings that I bought, but they are a nightmare to wear. So they're these, they are a champagne gold color. The issue that you have, it doesn't matter how much you baby these, the pearls, as you can see, fall out. Chanel do and will fix these for you. If you take them into the store, they will fix them for you, but it normally requires them being sent away to Paris. It takes a little bit of time to get them back. And from my personal experience, you get them back and it only happens again. So you're constantly going in and out of the store. One of the things that I did, and I mentioned this last year and I had so many of you asking how, like what my search description was on eBay, is I went onto eBay and I found someone who was selling a tiny little like airlock zip bag of these tiny pearls. And I ordered them, they cost me about two pounds, they turned up and I was so thankful because they were the exact size of these. They weren't the exact same color, like these have got a very slight blue tinge to them, like iridescent blue. The ones that arrived were more of a classic pearl color and they had the sort of yellowy, pinky hue to them. But to be honest, you can't really tell. And it's better to do that than have an earring like that that's missing a load of stones. And what I do is I use some super glue and every time they fall out, I replace them. But what I'm gonna do when I've run out of those spare pearls I don't know. So that is my recommendation. I think steer clear of anything like this. And I think that given this is the case, I find it almost jokeable that they end up being the most expensive items that they sell. Incidentally, I can't speak for necklaces, for bracelets, even for brooches, because the only thing I've ever had from Chanel that has got pearls in it has been earrings. It was the first thing that I ever bought. I learned the hard way and I've steered clear from it ever since. Now, finally, I wanna talk about a brand that when it comes to like the big players like Hermes and Chanel and Dior, they're definitely like a couple of rows below. But if you're looking to get something that has got that sort of luxury designer look, it's actually good quality, it doesn't fall apart and it's way affordable. Let's talk about Vivian Westwood. I have got two pairs of Vivian Westwood earrings they are both beautiful, I love the look of them. They come in really nice packaging. Again, they make a great gift. Both of these were under £100 when I bought them. They look so pretty, they dress up any outfit. This particular pair of earrings actually, this is like my oldest pair. I bought these off ASOS years ago. Not a single stone has fallen out. I wear them to death. They still look great. The packaging's all really lovely. I gotta say actually, out of all of them, where quality and value for money comes in, these ones win. When it comes to return on investment, it has to be Chanel. You can buy something from Chanel, go to sell it and literally make money. I've even done that on shoes before that I've worn quite a bit and Chanel just seems to be one of those brands that really holds together. If you have any questions about any of these items, Put them in the comments below. I always say this, but I try and scroll through all the comments and anything that's a question, I try and answer them. So if you've got any questions, just shout me. Definitely always look on secondhand websites before you necessarily go and buy something because it gives you a good idea as to whether they hold their value when people go to sell them. Why don't you join me in another video? I'm gonna link to a couple here and here. If you haven't subscribed, then click over here. I never know if these work, but we'll try it. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video.